Today, I'm going to show you how to make a before and after GIF in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to create a before and after GIF. This is a really cool thing that you can do to show your editing progress in a photo. Basically, it's something you can upload to social media and it'll just flip back and forth between the before and the after. It's going to be relatively simple to do and it'll give your audience a huge idea of what awesome job you've done with your retouching. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Jumping into Photoshop, we're going to take a look at one of our images from our Retouching 101 through 301 Pro tutorial. So this is the after. Now, we've done a lot of work to this image in the Pro tutorial, and I'm going to go ahead and see all everything is basically here in group. So we're going to go ahead and uh, collapse a group, and we're going to click here and show you the before. So this is, uh, this is basically straight out of the camera, layer zero. So here's the before and the after. Now, in order to create an animated GIF, I need to make sure that I've got a layer for the before, which I have here, my layer zero, but I don't have a layer for the after, so I need to make that. Okay, it's actually really easy to do. Simply go to the very top, we're going to click on a new layer, so you want to be on a blank layer here, and I would need to basically apply my entire image onto this one layer. So, to do so, let's go to image and down to apply image. There we go. So here in Apply Image, we want our settings here. Layer, we want to be merged. Okay, it's merging everything we see, and it's going to put it on one layer. Our channel is going to be RGB. Blending mode can either be multiply or normal. Both will work. Okay, your opacity is 100, and we want to make sure inverse is invert is not checked. So let's hit OK. Okay, now basically what it's doing is it's taking everything that it sees, and it's just putting it on a new layer. So now you can see here, that's exactly what we have. So for instance, if I use my move tool, you can see it's just everything we see copied onto a new layer, which is perfect. So we have our before layer and we have our after layer. So this is perfect. Basically, this is all you need for creating a before and after GIF, just the before layer and the after layer. So now we're going to take both of these layers and we're going to put them into a separate document that's sized correctly for our animated GIF. So you want to make sure you're creating the animated GIF in the size that you actually want to put out on the internet. So I went ahead and created this document. We're going to go to image and down to image size. So you can see this is 1500 pixels wide by 2300 pixels tall. And it's basically the same, uh, same aspect ratio as this image here. It's just a lot smaller. This original image is quite a bit larger. So for instance, if you were going to be like putting these on Instagram or something, where it's a square format, you might say, I want this to be 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels. And there we go. You could be, you could do this with a square format. So it doesn't really matter uh, what size it is. It, you just want to make sure that it's going to be in the proper output size to wherever you're going to upload it. So in this case, I'm going to say, I want this one to be uploaded to flurn.com. So this is the right size for me. Now here in this document, we've got both of our layers. Remember, we've got our zero and our layer 20. This is going to serve as our before and our after. Okay. So I want to go ahead and copy both of these layers onto my new document. So let's hit Control or Command. I'm going to click on both of the layers so they're both selected. And then with my Move tool, I'm going to click here and drag from one document to another. There we go. And now you can see that both of those layers have been copied from one document to another. So if I make this layer visible and invisible, there we can see they're both in the exact same place. And that's really important. They have to be in the same place or let's, you know, if you move this over here and make it visible and invisible, that's not so much a before and after, right? So make sure they're in the same place. Now I'm going to hit F for full screen. So we've gone from a huge image, right? This image, let's go ahead. I'm going to go to image and down to image size. Okay. So this is a 3840 by 6024. It's a huge image, it's way bigger than you would want to put on the internet. So this is much better for sizing on the internet, but we can see that our actual photo is much too large. So let's go ahead and resize our photo to fit in this area. Now, when I'm resizing, I want to make sure that I have both of these selected, right? You don't want to just resize one because again, it's the before and the after. Now, my next major suggestion is to turn both of these layers into smart objects. And the reason being, 
a regular layer, if you make it smaller and then back large again, you're going to lose a lot of definition. But a smart object maintains all the original image data. So you can resize it a bunch of different times and you're going to keep all the definition. Okay, now turning these into a smart object is really easy to do. All you have to do, make sure you're clicked on your layer and you don't want to, you want to do this one layer at a time, by the way. So right click on your layer and you go down to convert to smart object. Really simple to do. And it's going to just take a second because these are pretty large files here. So our first layer, just right click, go to smart object and your second right click and go down to create a smart object. There we go. And I'll just kind of show you the idea. Like I'll hit control or command T on the first one to transform it. And let's go ahead. We're going to transform it like really, really, really small. Okay, and then I can make it back large again and we're not going to lose any information. So you can see even getting getting larger like that and we haven't lost any of the original information. So that's why we convert to smart objects. Let's just hit undo. Okay, so now that we have both our before and our after and they're both set to smart objects, I'm going to hold shift and click on both of those layers. And now we want to just resize them. We're just going to make a little smaller. So let's hit control or command T for the transform. I'm going to click on my chain link here between our width and our height, and I'm just going to lower this down. There we go, because we want it to fit right inside of our actual document. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to make sure that the before and after contains our entire image. Okay, we're looking good. So we've got our before on layer two and our after on layer three. Okay, so we've got a couple different layers. Our next step is we need to animate this, right? We need to use our timeline to actually create an animation so we have a two frame animation that we can then export as an animated GIF. All right, let's jump in and we'll show you how to animate. So to animate your before and after GIF, go to window and then down here to timeline. Okay, so here in our timeline, we don't have any animation. So we're gonna click on create frame animation. Let's go ahead and click there. And we can see we have our first frame here. Okay, so we can see our first frame, it looks like that, okay, and it's gonna last for zero seconds, and it's gonna play one time. So if I make this layer invisible, let's, like, let's make layer three invisible, you're gonna see it's going to change. So now this would be the first frame on our new layer. So with the before and after GIF, really it's just two different frames. We have our before and our after. So what we're gonna do, we've got our before, now I'm gonna click and drag this to the new layer icon or the new frame icon. There we go. Let's just click and drag this to the new frame icon and we're going to copy it. And now we can see we have two different frames here. Okay. So our first frame, this is going to be our before. Now let's click on our second frame and make sure that the after becomes visible. All right. So here we can see before and after. And if I just click on my frames, there you're going to see my change happens in my layers. Now here we can choose the amount of times it's going to repeat. I can tr click on three times. Okay, and I'm just going to hit play. You're just going to see it's going to do it very fast because the delay is set to zero seconds. So let's change this to uh, forever. I want this to just play continuously forever. If you have it set, you know, one time, twice, or three times, or whatever, it's just going to show a before and after a couple of times and then stop. So here, now that it's set to forever, it's going to play a before and after forever. So if I just hit this, you're going to see it's kind of freaking out. Let's hit the stop button. The reason why it's going so fast is because the delay right down here is set to zero seconds on both of those. Okay, so let's click this little down arrow where it says our uh, next to the zero seconds and we're just gonna go to one second. Let's click on this one and go to one second as well. So let's hit the play button and here you're gonna see now we've got a one second GIF. So before stays visible for one second and the after stays visible for one second. Pretty cool. Now, in my opinion, this is a little bit too fast. So we're going to click here on this down arrow again. I'm going to go to other, and then let's just type in three seconds. All right, so it says set frame delay, hit three. And over here, we're going to go to other as well, and we're going to type in three. Okay, so it'll show frame one for three seconds and frame, frame two for three seconds, and it's going to play forever. So let's hit this play button and then see about what that looks like. So one, two, three and then a change. All right, that's pretty cool. It's not distracting, but you get a good idea of the before and the after. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit stop. So really that's all there is to it. We've done basically all the work we need to do within Photoshop. We've got our before frame and our after frame. They're each gonna play for three seconds and this is gonna go on forever. 
Now what we need to do is export out using these settings and make sure we choose the right GIF settings so it will actually play when you load it in an internet browser. All right, let's jump in. We'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and export out our animated GIF. First thing we're going to do is go to File and down here to Export and over to Save for Web Legacy. Now, if you're using an older version, Photoshop CS6, it's going to say Save for Web and Devices right over here. In Photoshop CC, it's here, Save for Web. All right, let's go ahead and click there. Now, I'm going to zoom out. There we go. Looking good. And here in your options, by default, it's going to be on a JPEG. Now, no matter what you do, a JPEG is not going to support animation. If you want to make sure that the animation plays, click here and make sure you're on a GIF. OK, so now here in the GIF, on the very bottom, you can see our anima animation options. So we have two of two, meaning this is two frames, and this will loop forever. So let's hit this play here in the export dialog, and we can see that it actually is playing between our before and after. OK, let's go ahead and hit stop, and it will be playing for all time, playing forever. Now, you can resize this here if you want, too. Let's go ahead and change our width to 1,000 pixels wide. There we go. And our options for our GIF, we want to make sure that we change to perceptual. We want to be on diffusion and make sure transparency checked is checked and also convert to sRGB. Make sure that's checked as well. Now, it can be really helpful here. We have our size here. We have it's going to play forever, two frames. It's also really helpful to note here on the bottom, this is our actual image size. So this is a GIF. Now, it's going to be a little bit larger. It's going to be 1.4 megabytes. So it's kind of a large file, but it's going to be really nice because it's going to show us our before and after. So all these settings look really great. Let's go in and hit this Save icon. We're going to hit Save here. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop before, after, dot GIF. All right, and let's go ahead and navigate to our desktop and open this up. So we're going to go here to our finder window, clicking on desktop, and here we see before, after, dot GIF. And you can see here in my little preview, it actually is showing us the before and the after. Now, if you want to see how this looks on the web, simply right click. I'm going to go to open with, and in this case, I'm just going to go to Google Chrome. OK, so here we can see our image just as it would display on the internet if you uploaded it to your website or whatever. And here it is showing our before and after GIF. All right, guys, and that's all there is to creating a before and after GIF in Photoshop. If you want to do this on your own, just follow these key steps. First, it's time to make your before and after frames. So your before should be your image as you just open it. And this should be the bottom layer in your document. Now, we're going to create a new layer on the top of everything and go to Image down to Apply Image. Make sure your settings say Merge. RGB, you can have it set to a normal or a multiply blending mode at 100% and make sure invert is not checked. That way it's going to basically just put a snapshot of your entire image on that new layer. Next, go ahead and create a document that's sized properly for the web. You can do a square format if you're going to do it on Instagram. In this case, we did a portrait format. It's going to be uploaded to flurn.com. You can make this any size you want. Once you've created your document, it's time to copy the before and after layers onto the new document. So just hold Control or Command down, click on both layers, and click and drag them from one document to another. Now, I suggest having these both converted to smart objects. That way, you're not going to lose definition if you resize them a bunch of different times. Go ahead and size your layers to fit into your new document, and be sure that both of the layers are selected. You want to make sure they're in the exact same place, so when you make one visible and the other invisible, that they do look like a before and after. Next, it's time to create the animation. Go up to Window and down to Timeline, and then click on Create Frame Animation. From here, go ahead and click on a new frame. And as long as you have the layer visible on the new frame, you'll be able to see the before and the after. You can change how many times it repeats on the very bottom of the dialog and change how long each image is going to stay up right underneath each frame. Once your animation is playing how you want it, it's time to save it out. Go over to File, down to Export, and Save for Web. Make sure you're saving this as a GIF. And go ahead and look on the bottom right for the animation options and hit play. And make sure it does play well here. You can resize this if you want. And when you're done, just go ahead and hit export. In this case, we exported it out to our desktop. And then I right clicked on the image and went to open in Google Chrome so we can see how it actually plays on the internet. And that's all there is to it, guys, creating a before and after GIF in Photoshop. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free episodes every single week, just like this one.
And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or comment about today's episode, simply leave it in the comment box right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. My name is Aaron Nace, and thanks for watching the Disney Channel.